Hello. Let me tell you how I learned to code, which actually I started when I was eight.、Um, what happened was this: my mother works for this company that does shipping stuff, and they have this extra computer. And she brought it home and put me in this class for learning how to use the computer at a local community center where little kids learn how to draw and do craft and things like that.、Um, I think both of us thought it's like using the computer, but it's actually computer programming, and it's、uh, using this language called BASIC. I don't know if anyone actually know about BASIC. <laughs> old school, very old school. But、uh, I actually really liked it. I. I、remember going to the library and getting a book and learning on my own.、Um, it may not sound very impressive. Actually, I didn't think of it that much at that point. But I took a book that is in English, and I grew up in Hong Kong, and English is not my first language. And it just happened to be that they have this book for programming for kids, and it's in English. So I just picked up and read and did the exercises. I think I was so into it that I was forcing my cousins to play with the. Hangman app that I wrote, she was not interested at all. I'm like, play it, it's really fun. She's like, what is this? This is not fun. <laughs> hey, I really, I really enjoy programming. It's really for me something that is very fulfilling because I can ask the computer to do something and it will do it for me. It's almost magical. But of course, you know, it also does exactly what you tell it to do. If you tell it something and you make a mistake, it will make a mistake. It's just really obedient. Um, so that's how I got started, and then when I was in、um, secondary school, I guess grade seven will be the equivalent here. We have this class called computer literacy. That is the class that my mom thought she was enrolling me when I,、uh, in the community center. They were teaching you what are input devices, what is a mouse, what is a keyboard, and things like that. And there's a little, a little bit of programming in a language called Logo. Anybody know Logo? All right. Okay. So this is a little turtle that you can ask it to do an FD10. So move up like 10、uh, space, and then you can do RT90, and then it will walk. So it's a drawing program.、Um, we actually this computer literacy class in school is once a week, and it's classroom and lab. And then the lab time you have to actually share a computer with your Partner, so there's not actually a lot of programming in there. In fact, I remember that I was、um, sometimes I just want to chat with my partner. So the computers are very slow. I will ask the、um, turtle to draw a circle by ask writing a loop of 360 steps. So it will just kind of crawl its way around. So the teacher will come along and say, "Oh, why are you guys talking?" I'll be like, "Drawing a circle." And and then that's fine. Then we can keep talking. And of course, if I actually want to make a circle, I'll just draw it in 36 steps because there's no resolution on the screen. You can't actually tell that it's a circle or not. So much faster when I actually wanted to draw a circle.、Um, so I mean, I think a lot of people think if you like started programming as a kid, then you are like always hacking, like always programming, and just like know everything. It wasn't like that for me. I enjoy programming, but it's kind of a side thing that I do it when I get a chance. But I knew that I wanted to do computer science, so choosing a major in college was no problem.、Um, I started going in. I knew I would do computer science, and I came here actually to study. And I was actually not used to the fact that here people like to ask questions to show off. It's a very odd phenomenon. Like you'll be in class, and there'll be these people that seems to know a lot of things because they will ask these questions that. It's not mentioned in the book. It doesn't seem to be related to anything, and they just ask and make you feel dumb. I didn't realize that they were doing that. I thought, like, oh my god, you know, this is really just beyond me. They're way better than me, and I was kind of not happy about the situation. And I think everything kind of fall together when I took my first internship. I was interviewing、uh, with Microsoft, and I thought I totally failed my on-campus interview. But then they flew me into Seattle. I'm like, Seattle. Free trip, yeah. So I just flew in, and I did nothing. I'll get the job, so I was just totally just relaxed and joking around with the interviewers, and I got the job. That was an eye opener. That I can just be myself. I don't have to puff up like a cat when they're scared to look bigger than I am. I can just be honest and say things when、like、I say th I don't know if I don't know an answer, and and it's okay. Like people actually respect that honesty, and. The other thing that I learned is I actually then on purposely set up situation like that where I can just 
be myself, there's nothing to lose. So right before I graduated, before I went back to Microsoft to interview, I actually interviewed at a couple of other companies that I don't care whether I'll get the job or not. So those are my practice interviews. So I remember going in, and my training was actually in C, so I don't know anything about object-oriented programming. And one of the questions was like, do you know the difference between public, protected, and private? I'm like, no, can you tell me? And they told me. And I turned around, the next job interview, they asked the same question. So I was like, yes, yes, I know what is protected, private, and public. And it was great. It was just great to have that experience in a, in a kind of safe setting where you know that you cannot mess up. Nothing can go wrong. You can push your limit and then just build your confidence that way. So yeah, that's how I come to be who I am. And I love programming still. Thank you. Thank you.